Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello, Rosa. Um, so you are the next speaker with uh, slopes, a package for reproducible slope calculation, analysis, and visualization. <clears throat> I will introduce. I will introduce you here uh, before your presentation. Uh, Rosa uh, Felix is a PhD in transportation systems and urban cycling, cycling mobility researcher at UShift Lab. Rosa is skilled in GIS and R, and she is a cycling activist in Lisbon and project coordinator of a local community bicycle shop. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay, so welcome, Rosa, and please share your presentation so I can add it to the stream. Okay. In the meantime, I don't know if uh, Robin is also here. Robin, the only the only thing is, did you sign the license form? Uh, Otherwise, I cannot add you. Sure. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, me too. Compartilar. Compartilar. Okay. Did you find? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So the floor is yours, Rosa. Okay. Thank you. So um, I'm here to present uh, slopes, a package for reproducible slope calculation and analysis and visualization. Uh, this is um, this is a project between me and Robin Lovelace uh, from the University of Leeds, the Institute for Transport Studies. Uh, and uh, as uh, you were presenting me before, I, I'm from the University of Lisbon in technical uh, U shift lab. So, um, how hilly is a street and how hilly is a hike or this route? Uh, we can talk about hilliness, gradients, slopes, whatever name you, you want to call this. Uh, sometimes, in and regarding uh, active transportation, hilliness or slopes are used as a standard excuse for not uh, investing in cycling. Uh, sometimes they say, oh, this, this city is too hilly to cycle, so uh, don't worry, we'll never, we'll never have cyclists here, so it's not worth to, to invest in it. But in fact, this, this value is sometimes never actually, never, never measured. Um, so when, uh, when we ask ourselves, how hilly is a street? We want to, to know this value, a number. Um, and this is uh, um, somehow um, easy thing to do. We need, we need a, a distance and a height to perform this, this calculation. Uh, and with these, these numbers, this data, we can uh, inform uh, these, de these judgments to, to, to support decisions when we are planning for, for active transportation. So this is a, a, a value that most of the times is actually never measured, but it would be very relevant if it was. But we are in 2021 and uh, elevation data is rarely uh, available uh, everywhere with more or less um, resolution, but mainly is uh, generally available. So um, we were working in this project, which is called Slopes, which is a, an, an R package, a language for the R language, uh, which is this open source tool to compute gradients and to produce also uh, hilliness maps for any given city. So it has the power to be uh, reproducible. Um, this has uh, methods, uh, open data, open methods. And uh, it's based on um, on free and open software, um, and uh, with the ability to, to be used with open data. So um, this is an uh, an example of a beautiful map produced with the slopes package. This is Lisbon, my my city, which they say uh, it's too hilly, uh, but in fact. Um, more than half of the, the street segments are uh, flat, 
are between zero to three percent um, flat. Uh, zero to three percent. Uh, the, the slope is between zero to three percent, and um, and the zero to five percent. Um, uh, sorry, and the seventy four percent of the of the street segments. Uh, have gradient between zero to five percent, which is still very uh, cyclable. Uh, this is other city, which is Zurich, which has uh, seven more, more, more times uh, cycling uh, rate rate values than Lisbon, and uh, in fact, it's even more hillier. Right. This is another uh, big uh, city, São Paulo. Um, which is a um, very, very large city, and this was also uh, done with a slopes package. Um, but as you can see, uh, even if it's, it has a lot of um, hilly areas, as you can see, still you can easily visualize and identify by uh, visualization uh, that there is a lot of um, flat areas and flat segments and flat routes even between those hilly areas where you probably could uh, um, invest in cycling infrastructure or other uh, infrastructures to in this uh, active transportation. Uh, this is Medellin in Colombia. And this, just for fun, is Amsterdam, where 99% of the streets are below 5% building. So um, we here were. This was the the what moved us to 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 do this project um, was more about this infrastructure prioritization problem, um, and and for for we really want to 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 solve uh, real problems uh, involving slopes. So. Um, of course, this is fun to play with, but uh, we know, we are aware that uh, to 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 um, to 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 work with the real problems, uh, it also can produce um, better better things, right? Um, and also, we knew that uh, the existing tools were not uh, up to the job. And the, the existing tools that sometimes are very expensive and not accessible to, to everyone. I mean, not everybody has the access to a, to a ESRI uh, license, like, such as the 3D analyst. Um, and sometimes the uh, online services are very hard to scale up because uh, you can do for, uh, you can uh, calculate uh, gradients for a, for a area, but if you want to scale up for a, for entire country, uh, sometimes they can be uh, more hard. Also, uh, this was a, a R program challenge, which was uh, fun to to move to, and um, we uh, we would like to implement all the the results to to support for route planning uh, in active transportation, which are also uh, some projects that me and Robin are involved in our um, organization in, in the academy. Um, so to the, the application for, for this, this package in, in our perspective, perspective was uh, to support the decision making in uh, infrastructure prioritizations. But there are a lot of other uh, applications, of course. Um, uh, in, in, in terms of the active travel uptake models, the propensity to cycle tool uh, simplifies uh, the slopes. It takes the, the, the average gradient for, for each route, the average hilliness for each uh, route between point A to point B. But here in this package, uh, it, it sophisticates a little bit more. So it takes the mean distance weighted hilliness, which means that um, if you have uh, very steep segments, um, it's, uh, it waits for its distance, right? Uh, and we know that uh, a network or a, a route is as good as its weakest link. So uh, it's really important if you, you, can, you can have a, a very 99% 
or uh, 80% of the, the rod being flat. But if you have a, sh a short percentage that uh, has a very steep, um, steep, um, steep gradient, uh, then uh, it will not be, be as good. So uh, this is one of the, the ways um, that we thought it would be very important to sophisticate the calculation of the, the, the hilliness, but this, this package uh, can, um, can handle other uh, ways to, to calculate slopes. It can take the average hilliness, the mean distance weighted, by default it uses this one, the maximum gradient, you can use also the 95 percentile or other um, custom percentile gradient. Well, um, it can be customized to a lot of because it's open source, you can customize to other uh, ways to calculate um, healiness. So on the right, you have a, a plot for a elevation um, profile, which is something that uh, any any provider can can throw when you are planning a, a route. Uh, this is one of the, the outputs uh, for the um, for the slopes package, which is uh, relevant if you are studying uh, a single link. But also, when you are looking at a, a, a micro scale, not only at this mic micro scale, but a, a larger scale, you can uh, better identify by visualization, identify uh, areas where it will be a good idea or a bad idea um, to identify these connections with a higher uh, cycling potential, uh, which means uptake. Um, uptake from other users, from other modes, uptake uh, uh, cycling or to invite, invite cycling uh, people to go from A to B uh, using other other modes with less effort and more, um, more safety uh, by providing a safe infrastructure. So uh, just briefly uh, how it works. Um, it, uh, it combines two main types of uh, data inputs one side, uh, you need a linear uh, feature data set, uh, um, vectorial data set. Uh, it can be a, a single uh, line, uh, line string, it can be a river, it can be a, a road segment, it can be anything. It can be uh, an entire uh, road network, it can be an a open street map or other provider um, vectorial uh, line string uh, data set. And in the other hand, you need a, a elevation information, uh, which typically is a raster uh, data set, a digital elevation information, which you can uh, uh, freely um, download from the S SRTM uh, NASA mission or Copernicus, Copernicus mission available for Europe and sometimes other uh, local agencies, which has sometimes uh, with a higher uh, detail or resolution, and then when you when you combine these both information together, slopes will compute the longitudinal gradient for you uh, with both of these input together. Um, so uh, let's go to to details. Um, I can show you with a with a live demo with a with a R studio. Uh, this is this package lives already in uh, R OpenSci organization, and uh, you can install with with a GitHub with remotes um, with R OpenSci, and then you have uh, uh, some main fun main functions. One of them is uh, elevation add which adds the, a third dim dimension. So it converts a XY line string, um, a two dimensional uh, line string to a three dimensional uh, XYZ line string and adds this, this, this uh, elevation information, the Z. Um, the slope XYZ, which calculates the slope uh, associated uh, with, the, with this uh, three dimensional um, line strings. The slope raster, uh, which calculates the slope of the line strings based on a raster data set, and also uh, a plot slope 
which uh, plots this um, slope profile association with a, with a line string. I can have this demo live for you. How do I do this? Okay, so maybe okay. so so to install is just as I as I said before uh, installing in help with uh, our open size slopes. and uh, if you don't have uh, your local um, raster digital elevation model you'll need a api uh, key for a map box because this package uses a ceramic map box which uh, by its term uses a map box api key uh, to get elevation information so uh, we, we recommend you to, to register for a free map box api key and then you load slopes and the scf uh, package um, and then you can play with the with the, um, with some data set examples that came with the, with the package in this case we have a uh, Lisbon road segment which is um, a simple feature um, a line string and as we can see This is just just a simple uh, line, a simple road uh, that goes near uh, a high part of the city, uh, between the high part of the city and the uh, flat downtown part of the city. So imagine that you want to compute the, the gradient of this route. You do this uh, with a two-step process. First, you, you add the elevations to each of the coordinates of this line string. So this will get you the, the, uh, the elevation information for each vertices with a, with a ceramic uh, package and the API map box. And then you can see it gives you the X, Y, Z coordinates. If you want to see just with the ST coordinates, uh, you can see here the Z column, you have the, the elevation for each vertice uh, of that small uh, line stream road segment. And then you can use um, the some of the Z functions. The Z values will just return uh, all the Z values uh, that are stored on, stored on that uh, XYZ uh, line string. The Z mean will give you the, the mean um, elevation, the minimum elevation, the maximum elevation, the start, and the end. As you can see, it starts in 80, 87 meters and it ends in 79 meters, which is a quite big difference. And then you can calculate the average slope, which is very fast. Uh, the results tells you that the, the average slope of that uh, line string is 21% gradient, which is uh, quite a lot. Then, uh, we we can uh, try with another example with and without uh, uh, available uh, DEM. So here we will we'll try with a larger uh, route. As you can see, this route has uh, 2.5 kilometers, which is a little bit longer, and it crosses all the downtown. This is a hilly area. Um, it cross hilly, then goes down, and then goes up again. Sorry. So first, it adds elevations. And then 
it gets you the, the average slope. The average slope is uh, 7% gradient. But then if you want to use a, a DEM, and here the, the package provides you a, a DEM, um, just a small one for, for this area. You can also compute it using uh, the routes, this, this route, with this argument DEM equals DEM Lisbon route raster. You can notice that uh, previously you didn't, we didn't use that argument. Just we just used the the route argument, and here we, we use dm equals the raster. And also, as you can see, we have here uh, seven seven point five percent gradient, and here seven point eight percent gradient, which is expectable to be a slightly different results depending on elevation information uh, data sets, which can be different. Um, and you can see uh, in some in one of the vignettes we have uh, some explanation about that. Um, also, we have uh, for dif different um, ways to compute uh, slope. So, for as an example, we'll use the first um, the first uh, small um, uh, road segment x y. We'll call it x y. Uh, we we have the x y values and then the distance, the sequential sequential distance, and then the elevations uh, of this 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 x y um, road segments. And now we can have the slope distance function, which uh, calculates the consecutive consecutive distances and elevations. And the slope distance mean, which is the, the one um, that does not um, does not consider the um, does not weight by the distance, it only considers the mean of the the, the slope. So this is the, the mean value of the, the slope, which is 0 0.9. If you want the weighted one, we use the slope distance weighted, which gives you slightly different value. And then if we want uh, it to be directed, so if we want to know if this value is uphill or downhill, because uh, this one is the absolute value of the, the slope, uh, we can ask it to be directed, adding that argument. And here we see that it's done. Rosa, we are a bit uh, over time. Ah, OK. <laughs> and, and we have some questions. I would okay, like to okay, move okay, to okay. the questions. Sure. Would you like to say some words to wrap up first? Uh, sure. S sorry, I thought it, it would be 30 minutes. so. Um, okay, um, so let me just wrap this up uh, very quickly. So this, there are uh, four main functions that this uh, package has. Uh, the elevation functions um, where, where you can add, get, extract, uh, or um, get inf information about the values of, of elevation. Uh, the slope calculation and the where you can have different ways to measure and compute a slope, the distance regarding sequ sequential distance between vertices, and the plot um, to plot digital elevation profiles. So the contribution for of this package is an, to to be an easy and graphical access to this type of information to gradients and slopes, also to improve walking and cycling uptake models from this point of view, but you can use it to other many um, uh, applications in real world, to be open, free, and reproducible uh, methods to compute slopes. And of course, we are open to other contributions for other uh, people that are uh, watching this. So maybe to, to make this a QGIS plugin, or a Python uh, package. You can find uh, this package 
in a, uh, our OpenSci uh, GitHub, so our uh, github.com slash our OpenSci slash slopes, and also some tutorials to produce uh, hill and S maps in this uh, link. Uh, we have some future directions and challenges such as 3D visualization and auto download, download of elevation point that instead of download all the raster itself and then uh, get the information uh, for all vertices. Um, and some, of course, from our side, some research uh, challenges also. So thank you. That was this. And uh, I'm sorry for this time that I took. <laughs> it's OK. I will add now Robin that he wants to participate as well. Hello, Robin. Hi. How are you? So I will translate some of the questions for you then, but we have like six questions from the audience. So it's a really interesting topic. Thank you, uh, topic, sorry. Thank you, Rosa, for your contribution and also the live demo as well. Um, so the most voted question is, uh, what is the difference between this method that you are presenting and just estimate its slope from a very high resolution DEM or DTM and then just querying with the, the roads network. Like using a raster, I mean, yeah, this is the question. <laughs> using a raster, a very high resolution raster and just then querying it with the roads network. What, what is the difference? Or is this what your method propose? What is different about it? Um, I, I could say something on that. I think um, it, it it's largely, I think a key thing about the slopes package is we're focused on linear features. So in transport planning, knowing how steep a road is, is really important. And so that unit of analysis is, um, what we're focused on, whereas if you're looking at raster imagery, each uh, that the slope is calculated um, on a grid by grid basis. So you might have a gradient that is um, perpendicular to the direction of the road, but in fact the road is flat because it's going alongside a hill. So, um, and and we actually do see cases like that in the real world where you've got a road that's going um, following the contour lines on a steep hill that's relatively flat, it's, it's, it's actually quite hard to calculate that. And um, that's one of the things where you could improve it, but it's definitely going to give you a better result than if you just calculate the raster um, gradient. However, if you did calculate the raster gradient and included the direction of the slope, that could be um, another way of calculating it, but um, we're, we're focused on first allocating um, elevation points to the um, to the vertices of the road and then taking it from there. Okay, great. Let's, let's make it super clear then. Thank you. Um, next question is, do you think your research could be converted into a mobile app, for example, for tourist cycles? Uh, I, I think that this research, uh, so adding adding up uh, the slope variable to uh, routing um, routing applications and the, um, like uh, finding the best route route choosing providers um, would be uh, like very valuable. Of course, a lot of um, uh, providers and applications already do that. A lot of them are very opaque and uh, do not um, do not cannot we cannot see how they do that uh, how how do they how how do they weight that in the the final equation of or the models um, and of course that this this is uh, this can be different uh, between um, a flat city or a hilly city because uh, this variable can be weighted differently. Uh, accordingly to, to different uh, types of cities. Um, but yes, I'm, I think that these, uh, if there's a on the fly a way to calculate slope 
um, and that this variable can be uh, introduced easily um, in, a, in a routing machines um, and that can be available to anyone that just want to, to see what's the best route between A to B in cycling in, or in e-bike or in a uh, wheelchair, uh, this can be very helpful of course. Okay, thank you. So I will make uh, the last question now. There are more, but we are already running uh, over time. Um, the third question is, can it be used to compute transversal slopes? By transversal slopes, do you mean slopes that run perpendicular to the direction of the road? I guess so, yes. Um, so I think that I, I was um, really interested in Dewey's fin final comments in the previous thing that he was saying it's uh, a data structure uh, could, could help this. And I think to some extent, um, data structure types could help with this. So I think I can answer this question with reference to a very quick screen share if I, if I can. So I hope it will work, but I can just um, do a, a demo of this is, this is the same slope actually that Rosa presented. And I think the answer is yes, but you would, using this package anyway, you would need to generate um, perpendicular roads. So if you sampled along this, um, this road and had perpendicular lines, you could do that. But that would require additional um, development work in the package. So it doesn't do it out of the box. Um, I think it would be an interesting area for development. But given that most roads are less than 10 meters wide, I don't think the uh, assuming I've got the right understanding of transversal uh, slope, I, I don't think that would be a, a priority. Um, but what I wanted to say about the uh, data structure is there's many ways to represent this road. So the one that Rosa presented was just one single line string object with an average gradient of seven. But when you break it up, you can see that there's uphills and downhills <clears throat> and as part of the peer review process for our open side, we actually added directionality. And you can imagine if you're on a wheelchair, for example, that directionality is going to be really important. So you're, this is showing you're going downhill on this section. Then there's a, a, a period of uphill. Ah, am I not showing it? Yeah. Sorry. And maybe Sorry. you can also like share, if you have a video, you can share in the chat so people can have uh, a look at no. that. I think uh, I could. Yeah, we are a bit um, over time and we need to move to the gala dinner. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate um, your contribution and your talk. And I will just now paste the, the remaining questions into the chat uh, in case you want to say something there. And we hope to see you like just after this in the social gathering area to socialize with other people and the gala dinner will happen in the Tangeria place. So please join us and have some Argentinian wine or whatever mm -hmm. you want to, to have, okay? Fantastic. So thank you very much for, for being Thanks. here with us uh, tonight. Thank you. thank you, Rosa, thank great talk. You. Thank you. Thanks, Rosa.